Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training and today we're going to talk about how to store ammunition long term. So uh, first things first, there are countless people out there that know a lot more about ammunition and its composition and, and all the rest of that stuff than I do. So if you're one of those people, please be part of the discussion and, uh, and comment below and share your knowledge. Don't be stingy. Um, you know, that's how I learn, that's how we all learn, is just by sharing our ideas and our experience. So I'd really appreciate it if you're, if you're an ammunition expert, uh, chime in a little bit and let us know uh, what you've learned as well. So, uh, first question, how long does ammunition last? Ammunition lasts a stinking long time, I mean decades. Uh, if it's stored properly, even longer than that, it can last 50, 60 years and still be as functional as the day it was produced. Uh, so how do we do that? That's going to be the, 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 uh, the question that we're going to answer in a minute. But uh, just to give you an example of that, um, when I was reading about uh, ammunition storage and, and you know how long can you store ammunition, kind of stuff like that, uh, probably about five years ago, I read in a forum a guy from the U.S. Army that said he was in charge of handling ammunition in Desert Storm, which was the original uh, Iraq War, you know, episode one back in 1991, and he said that the 5.56 that all his guys were using was made in the middle 60s. So even then they were using 30, uh, 30 year old ammunition and it was works as good as the day it was produced. Uh, and well, I would imagine that they pay attention to the way that it's stored and whatnot. Uh, another anecdote is I use a fair bit of this stuff which is a 7.62 by 39. This was uh, produced and, and packaged in the Ukraine and you know how old this stuff is? 1976. I run through about a, a crate and a half, which is around 2,100 rounds of this stuff. Not a single misfire, not one. So, kind of interesting. That's coming up 40 years old. Uh, this ammunition, so still works great. So, ammunition can last a long time. You just don't. You want to store it cool and dry. I mean, that's those are the rules. Uh, second question is, why do I need to preserve ammunition? And I'm not going to make this part too long, but just bear in mind, you want ammunition to work. And anytime you pull the trigger, you want the firearm to discharge, so you treat your ammunition good. The other thing is, in a situation where there's, as I like to call it, an interruption of services, <laughs> some people call it uh, different stuff, but let's say there's a natural disaster. Here on the West Coast, we're waiting for the big one. We're supposed to have it, you know, over the last 30 years, this big earthquake that's just going to wipe the West Coast off the map. Um, so maybe in terms of that, uh, you'd want to have some food and ammunition and whatnot, and maybe for a little while at least, money will have no value, so you need barter items. Ammunition is currency in an environment like that. What a great thing to have. I'll tell you, if I can get a can of coffee, uh, you know, or, uh, or a food dehydrator for 200 rounds of 762 by 39, man, that's a good trade for me. So ammunition can be really handy barter item, and, and ammunition has other benefits, as you guys are well aware. I don't need to explain that. So really good to keep it, uh, keep it preserved and, and treat it well. So uh, what fails in ammunition? Uh, the primer is the vulnerable part of ammunition. The primer is, is quite an unstable explosive. If it absorbs moisture, it, it, it'll fail. And if the primer fails, the, the cartridge itself is going to fail. So that's kind of the, you want to keep them cool and dry. That's the, the main thing that fails. Um, so first thing, if I buy ammunition in a cardboard box, right, little cardboard boxes, and I throw it on the shelf in my gun safe or my gun room or what have you, I personally keep that environment as dry as I possibly can. And the reason for that is, you know, I'm a, a kind of a high volume shooter. It's, it would be highly unlikely for me to have any ammunition around at all that would be more than three or four years old. It would be really difficult. Uh, that wasn't in a, a spam can or stored like this. But nonetheless, I treat the ammunition like it's long-term stored all the time. So what I've done is I bought a couple of, I keep a couple of these buckets called, this stuff's called Damperate, it's for RVs. You'll find it in the RV section in like a Walmart or something like that. And I buy these in the States when I'm down there. I think I pay about 14 bucks for one of these. Um, in my gun safe, if you want to call it that, uh, I have two of these. And all you do is just pull the, pull the lid up. It sucks up all the moisture and it traps it so it can't get out. And it does it at a pretty high volume. So I have two of these um, all the time open, sucking moisture out of that area. Now the ammunition that's on the shelf has not been exposed to high humidity for the, let's say it's there for a year. But maybe let's say it's there for a year and I decide to pack it up and put it in ammo cans and store it long term. It's still in really good condition. So not a really big investment. Again, these things take about a year 
maybe a year and a half, depending on how humid your environment is, to, to, to fill up. And so it's really not that expensive. So uh, if you're storing in cardboard boxes, that's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is to use ammo cans. And these things are awesome. I got about, I don't know, probably 30 of these things, right? I got a good deal on them one time and I bought them. Um, they come in sort of three sizes that you see. They do come in larger sizes, but these are the three that are, are practical in my opinion. Because I'll tell you, one of these, the mid-size guys, uh, you lift one of these things that are, it's loaded completely and it's, it's stinking heavy as it is. I, don't, I just use these for uh, transporting stuff to and from the range, whatever ammo I'm going to throw in there. Because, man, if this was full of 223, I don't even think you could lift it. Well, I, I certainly couldn't. Um, but ammo cans are really good. They are water and airtight, absolutely. So if I'm going to long-term store my ammunition, and the example of that is I have a few of these boxes I call my bailout boxes. So if there's a natural disaster and I can only grab a couple of ammo boxes and a couple of guns, I understand exactly where that stuff is and what I'm going to need. I can grab that can and it's got all the different ammunition in a, you know, in a survivable, as it were, quantity that I would need. Um, so I got a couple of these cans. They're marked bailout with an inventory so I never have to open them again. Uh, if I was going to do that, basically I would take my ammunition I would be in the environment where these damp rids are and the ammunition has been laying on the shelf for like a week or so just so that it's the moisture in this environment has stabilized in all the components. You leave these boxes with the lid open during that week. Uh, you take your boxes, you put them in the ammo box and you seal it and that's it. Don't open it again unless you're actually going to use the ammunition. As I said, inventory it on a sticker or something like that on the outside of it and then push it back for, uh, for your long-term storage. Uh, the next thing is these spam cans are unbelievable. Don't open these things unless you're going to use that ammunition. And even when I use an ammunition, I open, I have one of these open boxes in my environment, um, you know, my regulated environment, right? I open this thing and I transfer it into that ammo can. Now, an ammo can like that of 762 by 39, it's, it's gone in a couple of months. So not really a big deal, but I don't know. I'm just kind of uh, uh, careful that way. The next thing is let's talk about silica gel packets real quick. So a lot of people think, well, hey, I, I ordered a, uh, you know, a new piece of furniture and it came with these couple of big packets of silica gel. Awesome for me. I'm going to open up my ammo can. I'm going to throw those silica gel in there and they're going to suck all that moisture out. Um, water can't be destroyed uh, with any means that you or I have, right? So here's the thing. Silica gel packages, just in case you're unaware, they don't actually destroy moisture. They sit there, they absorb all the moisture they can, and then they're, they're worthless. Uh, there's some reusable ones you can put in the oven that'll drive the moisture out and then they'll suck in more moisture. Uh, but, you know, the ones that come in the furniture packages or gun packages or whatever, they're not like that. They're the, they're the inexpensive ones. So if you take an old silica gel packet and you throw it in that ammo can, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. If you buy, you can buy them new. So they're gonna come in a plastic bag. If you're gonna do that, again, you know, be in your environment that's, uh, that's as moisture free as you possibly can. Remember the box is open. You take your ammunition, you throw it in the box, you open up that plastic bag with the silica gel, you toss it in there, you close the box, and you don't open it again until you wanna use the ammunition. That's how you'd use silica gel packages. So just in case you didn't know, I mean, I have old ammo cans with silica gel packages that I got in whatever. I opened up this can one time, I'm looking, I'm like, what an idiot, you know? I just, <laughs> I just didn't know how they work, so. Uh, last thing uh, is going to be vacuum sealing. So here's a video, I'm gonna get his name. So this guy has a channel and it's O-B-X-S-O-L-W-I-N-D. Hard to pronounce, but um, anyway, this fellow's got a YouTube channel. He seems to be a really uh, well-informed reloader. Um, I've taken a liking to his videos uh, because they're, you know, he really knows what he's talking about. So here's a video. I'm going to link to it in the description. Go watch his video on long-term storage. I think it's great. Uh, but I wanted to use some of the footage of him vacuum sealing his ammunition. So why is vacuum sealing good? Well, vacuum sealing is perfect. There's no air left in there. So for moisture to travel through, uh, you've done that in your moisture free environment. That's great. But with vacuum sealing, you have an opportunity to seal your boxes of ammunition, right? The little cardboard boxes, as you can see, in an environment where uh, you can have them in certain denominations. So let's say you were sealing them for long-term storage to use as barter items. Now it's almost like a denomination, right? Like, you know, 50 
100, 150 rounds of 223, great, give me that can of Tim Hortons coffee, right? <laughs> you know, whatever the transaction is. So that's kind of good and it's easy for you to inventory. You go, oh, I got eight bags, I got 800 rounds or whatever, right? So, uh, and it doesn't get any better than vacuum sealing. I don't have a vacuum sealer, so I'm using some of, uh, some of Obsoswin's uh, video. So as I mentioned, guy's got great videos. If you're interested in reloading, check out his channel, really good. Uh, so vacuum sealing is a, is a good opportunity if you can afford the machine in the bags and you have the time to do it. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, uh, if you're thinking about storing ammunition, remember I've got a video on how much ammunition you need. Uh, again, just a thought-provoking thing to, to get you thinking about these, uh, these things. So hopefully it was helpful. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at Civil Advantage one or you can find us on the web at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks, and we will see you next time.